Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and today we're doing a book review for a new release by Zadie Smith called The Fraud. So this is her first foray into historical fiction and it's set in Victorian times and we're mainly in England and Jamaica is where we this story concentrates. And we have as our main protagonist throughout most of the story and the way we view most of it is through a lady called Eliza Touche who is widowed and she has become the housekeeper for her cousin by marriage and his new wife who who was a servant but is now his wife uh, Sarah and uh, the cousin is uh, William Ainsworth who was a novelist during the Victorian era and so we get a, a view into the literary circle uh, that was prevalent during the, the 1800s the Victorian England uh, we meet Dickens uh, for instance and several other characters that you may well recognise and this story has as a thread through it uh, what was known as the Tichborne Trials which took place in sort of I think it was the 1870s 1880s 1880s I think which was where a claimant who was a, a Cockney born butcher who was in Australia claimed to be the Sir Roger Tichborne, an heir to a baronetcy and quite a significantly large fortune. Uh, and he is the most obvious fraud of the title. Um, he, you know, he'd claimed to be this heir, but he didn't remember any uh, French, which was Sir Roger Tichborne's first language. He didn't remember any of his classmates or schools or lessons that he had or any real history from it but he, he still makes claim out and the case dragged on for, for many years uh, but he had huge public support and he would um, and his team would arrange you know massive rallies for his supporters which may sound familiar to some of you in recent history to garner support uh, for his legal case and raise funds for that such case and we see uh, how this story is shown through the lives of Eliza Touche and Household and Sarah uh, certainly who is a real supporter of Tichborne and we start to question of what is truth and how is truth portrayed and be that in the media, be that in the court case, uh, be that through novels, you know we're dealing with William Ainsworth who's a novelist and Zadie Smith has written uh, Eliza Touche as becoming a novelist as well. So we get all that and we get the truth and we get the fraud but the, the, the other part of Zadie Smith is there's very rarely just one um, storyline one protagonist one point to her stories so though this claimant for this case is the the most obvious fraud within the the, the storyline what we find is we find that pretty much everyone in the story has lies that they're telling or truths that they're omitting from supposed loved ones or people they respect so it seeds the question of do we really know anybody that we think we know um, are, are we all just a mystery to each other and what is the truth of that so how does that link to Jamaica and there's, there's two two elements that I'll, I'll bring out on this this quick review the first one is uh, Williams at Ainsworth writes his Jamaica story which Eliza as a, a staunch abolitionist to slavery when she reads it it doesn't really reflect anything about Jamaica whatsoever and though she doesn't challenge him per se on it it does give the, the view of the truth of what is happening in Jamaica compared to what is viewed as happening from the perspective of English society at the time. So in the early 1800s, the um, abolition of the Slave Trade Act was uh, approved and implemented by Parliament uh, in the UK. And people saw that as the freeing of slaves within the British colonies. But it, it wasn't. Anybody who was slaved at the time was still enslaved. And, you know, there was rebellions. There was horrific violence. There was still the horrific, brutal actions of slave owners on plantations that was taking place. And we see some of that through that element of abolitionists' view. But we also get... In the second half of the book, we also see that one of the, the main witnesses for the claimant is a, is a gentleman called Andrew Bogle, who is a, a former slave and now servant to the Tichborns. And he tells Eliza his story, his family story of how they became enslaved, how they um, ended up in Jamaica. And we see how through the slave trade, through the brutality of it, how 
history can be lost to us and how individuals can lose their knowledge of where they come from and who they are and who their families were and, and how that impacts on them. We also get comparisons throughout the story of what is what is poverty, what is freedom, and we see the different viewpoints of different people within the story. So we get Eliza, who views herself as impoverished at one point during the story. We see um, Sarah, the, the new wife of William Ainsworth, and how she's come from perceived poverty. And obviously we get Andrew Bogle and his experience of being a slave in Jamaica. And we, and we see the poverty from that viewpoint as well. So there's a range of views we see and there's a range of questions that it forces us to answer and we get, you know, who are the frauds, what is the truth, does anybody really know anybody else or is everybody an individual is effectively a mystery to everybody else as well. It's a well-crafted story. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I also enjoyed the way uh, Zadie Smith has pictured uh, Victorian England, especially Victorian London now. I have probably a different viewpoint from some because I live in northwest London so a lot of the places I recognise and it's interesting to see how they look now compared to how she is describing them in the story of Victorian England and also the other place we go to another place we go to is Stowe and when I was a child we you know I was brought up quite close to Stowe so I know that fairly well as well so it was interesting to see those in the text. I also listened to the story via audiobook and Zadie Smith does the audiobook, uh, and I do like an author reading their own works generally, uh, but sometimes they're not as good as a full-blown trained voice actor uh, knowing the story. However, Zadie Smith, for me, absolutely nailed it. And what was even more fascinating was the main protagonist, Eliza Touche, is actually Scottish, so she has a Scottish accent through that. And Zadie Smith, for me, uh, nailed that Scottish accent. Now, if you are Scottish, you may have a different opinion of that, but not being Scottish, I thought she did that incredibly well and the other accent she does and she tells a story brilliantly uh, through the audiobook as well. So if you want to take it up that way, it's a, it's a great way of taking in that story and taking in the points and the the sheer devastation on lives that we see through the, the slave trade and how it's perceived in Victorian England as well. So this is a story I thoroughly enjoyed. If you do pick it up, let me know what you think in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.